A friend told me that where she lives in Portland, Oregon, the leaves are turning brown now, during early summer. Specifically, she was referring to angiosperms, which are commonly called hardwoods, and she wanted to know what it means when autumn comes more than two months early and the trees are turning brown. This video provides a brief summary of timing, including bad timing, for trees and what it means for us. During normal times, trees have a specific annual cycle. Let's take a look using the calendar year. Most trees are dormant during the winter in temperate regions. The process of dormancy protects sensitive tissues. During dormancy, critical functions are hiding in the bunker. Photosynthesis cannot keep up with respiration during this time of year, so the tree is taking a rest. When dormancy ends, carbohydrates, or sugars, stored the previous autumn, begin to flow from the roots and up the tree to the branches. These carbohydrates are used to form buds, which soon break open to become leaves and shoots. Once fully formed, the leaves use the process of photosynthesis to produce carbohydrates that get shuttled around to various parts of the actively growing tree. Toward the end of the summer and into the early autumn, these sugars are transported primarily to the roots of the tree, where they can be tapped the following spring for another year of the tree's life. What's happening in Portland and many other places is the disruption of the regular cycle. The study of timing is called phenology, and a former PhD student of mine was the founding director of the U.S. National Phenology Network, which is housed within the U.S. Geological Survey. Another of my former PhD students is now serving as the second director of the program. The National Phenology Network is a citizen science program that relies upon citizens such as you and me to report information from around the country about the timing of emergence, flowering, and fruiting of various plants. You can find and join this effort at usanpn.org. Anyway, back to the disruption of the regular cycle of tree growth. Leaves on the angiosperm trees in Portland, Oregon are dying before they are capable of transporting carbohydrates to the roots. This might be happening because the trees have been tricked into believing it's autumn by the weird weather. It also might be happening because the trees are sufficiently desiccated to preclude much photosynthesis. Or perhaps it's a combination of these two phenomena. In any event, the abscission of the leaves, the breaking away where the stem of the leaf meets the twig, is occurring way too early. The photos photosynthetic machine known as the leaf is therefore leaving the tree before critical carbohydrates are put away for next year's growth. The inability of these trees to transport sugars from the leaves to the roots during summer and fall means that there will be no ready supply of carbs next spring. The bank of sugars typically stored in the roots has run dry. This phenomenon will be painfully obvious next spring when the trees produce few leaves, or maybe no leaves at all, at least on some trees. I doubt this happens to all of the trees in the area, although it would probably occur frequently enough to be noticed by the other organisms that rely on these trees for their own survival. Phenology is hugely important and understood by few people. Patterns of photosynthesis and respiration have developed over millennia as a result of evolution by natural selection. Ongoing changes in weather patterns, many of which are caused by abrupt climate change, are producing expectedly terrible results. If, like me, you are concerned about the near-term loss of habitat for human animals, then please support the Mere Reflection Framework at mereflection.com. While you're at it, please contact your favorite millionaire and ask him or her to support this framework too. After all, it's not only trees that are at stake. Human animals need habitat too. The habitat we need depends upon the continued persistence of many species, including trees. I have proposed planetary hospice as a reasonable response to abrupt climate change. Planetary hospice extends from society to our personal lives, including how we treat ourselves and others. A line from Spanish-American philosopher and writer George Santayana comes to mind. Quote, there is no cure for birth and death save to enjoy the interval. End quote. As we work to retain habitat for ourselves and other species on Earth, 
may we also enjoy the short time we spend here working together on behalf of the common good. Thank you for continuing to watch the videos on the Nature Bats Last YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe to this channel too. For additional perks, please consider becoming a member. Details can be found in the description beneath this video.